Are you bored with your therapy routine? Or are you starting to dread doing your exercises? Well, what I wanna to do today in this video is to show you how you can begin making your therapy more fun and motivating. Hi, I'm Lisa from Injury Recovery Coaching, and I'm gonna show you and discuss with you how you can begin incorporating your hobbies and things you enjoy into your therapy exercises. So the question then becomes, how do I take a movement that I want to strengthen and work on and link it to an activity that I enjoy? So stick around and I'll show you how. To begin, list three to four things that you're working on in therapy. For example, let's use general grasp and release, wrist flexion and extension, general arm strengthening. Then list three to four hobbies or activities you enjoy doing, either past or present. Now, if you're a perfectionist and you have a difficult time accepting the fact that you can't perform your old hobbies like you used to do before the stroke, then I would suggest coming up with some new hobbies that you think you may enjoy doing. So for today's example, we'll be discussing basketball and cooking. For each one of these activities, I'm going to start at a very basic level and grade it harder and harder. So that way, no matter where you are in your recovery, you'll see how you can adapt an activity to meet your needs. So we're going to start today with looking at basketball. And and when we look at grasp and release, there's not a whole lot of grasp and release with basketball, but more of an open palm. Um, there is a lot of flexion and extension of the wrist, as well as the elbow, and then all kinds of shoulder movements. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, obviously, there's a lot of balance that you can do and walking and dribbling and all that. And you can grade that as well. But a matter of fact, it just depends where you're at. If you're even can't stand very well, you can still do these exercises in a wheelchair. So it's all about grading the activity. As you can see, I don't have a basketball and you really don't need one. Just a large bouncy ball will suffice. Now, if you don't have full extension of your fingers, you can use the ball to stretch your fingers out as well as assist with wrist flexion and extension by rolling your affected hand on the ball. After you get some movement there, then you can focus on using your wrist flexion and extension. Assist bringing your wrist back with your unaffected hand if needed and begin focusing on flexing your wrist with an open palm to bouncing the ball off the wall while supported with your unaffected arm. Continue this until you can perform consistently. As you gain more and more control, try to hit a target, raising the height and distance of the target as you improve. Then gradually back up and gain more and more distance between you and the wall as you gain control. Now let's focus on dribbling. And with dribbling, you'll use wrist flexion and extension as well as elbow flexion and extension. So similarly as before, simply assist the ball back using your unaffected hand to achieve wrist extension, then release, bounce, and catch, and continue that until you can achieve a full dribble. Now to strengthen your overall arm during basketball, what you can do is add wrist weights. And that way you can practice shooting hoops with that, you can dribble and do what you can and the weights will just make the resistance a little more to strengthen up those shoulder and uh, elbow muscles. Now for cooking, there's a lot of things you can do for grasp and release. And one thing you can do is working on opening that hand 
in grasping things out of the drawer that you may need. Yes, it may take a little bit longer, but this is your therapy after all. So work on getting that wrist flexed, opening those fingers, bringing that wrist up, and put them on and release. Grab whatever you need out of the drawer and put it out so you can work with it. And if you stack your measuring cups, this is another good activity you can do. Just depends how much grasp you have. Maybe at this time, you can take each cup, try and grasp each cup and take it out from the rest of them. If not, go ahead and do that with your unaffected hand. And then perhaps you can take your affected hand and put back the cups that you don't need, just stacking those. So next, let's take a look at wrist flexion and extension. And this is a good stirring activity. So if you don't have, if you can't tolerate a lot of resistance, perhaps you can do something simple like pudding. Um, yes, you can use a beater, but if we want this to be therapy, you know, working five minutes to stir that pudding may be worth your time. And just the back and forth, back and forth. And if you get tired, use your unaffected hand, scrape the sides, help it out, and then get back to using your wrist flexion and extension. Now, if you have a difficult time grasping, you can always use that uh, foam cylinder or the pool noodle technique so you can grab it. And again, focus on flexion and extension. Now, if pudding is too easy for you and you need something a little more resistive to work the flexion extension muscles a little bit, maybe go to a cake mix or you can make cookies. So just think of something that adds more and more resistance to build up the strength in that wrist. And if you wanna build up your overall arm strength, go ahead and add some wrist weights because as you're doing activities down here and up here in your preparation and putting away, you will definitely feel it at the end of the activity, feeling it working your shoulders and your muscles. So hopefully you can see that therapy just doesn't have to be physical exercises, but um, you can take any activity that you enjoy to make uh, the therapy a little more fun and just make that conscious effort to work on those movements that you need and want to work on so you can be more functional. Using and adapting functional activities in your hobbies will hopefully make the recovery process a little more tolerable for you and very goal-directed. So until next time.